Hello and welcome to the first video for 2016 for Stage 2 Physics. Um, this video will cover projectile motion and the calculations. Uh, previously you should have covered a little bit about uh, introduction to projectiles including uh, scalars and vectors and uh, breaking down um, projectiles into the vertical and horizontal components. So this slide here uh, lists the five important equations uh, for projectile motion. Now you don't need to memorize these, these will be on the formula sheet that you'll get in the exam. However, uh, if you, however you will get to know these uh, equations and when to apply them uh, through the questions that you do in practice. Uh, you should have received a copy of these slides in the email, um, so you can follow along with the video and take any notes. So we've got five equations here and if you notice with each equation there is one t there is one term that is missing from each of the equations now this allows us to use the equations when they're applicable in any problems that we uh, get now I will make a note here that uh, you can see that the initial velocity is given by the velocity at uh, time zero uh, however some textbooks and some questions might present this term with a u as an initial velocity such as in the next slide. Now with the slides it is recommended that you take notes uh, in your notebook that you've been given uh, and this this slide in particular uh, take a note and highlight it as you'll be referring to it uh, often throughout the projectile motion topic. So for this projectile motion topic you'll be required to determine um, time of flight, the range, velocity and maximum height of projectiles. The following uh, few slides are a guide of which equations apply to determine the information about the projectiles. So for example, this first one uh, is the time of flight for a projectile. As we know, the time of flight is based upon the vertical component of a projectile's velocity. Um, is given by this equation. So the initial, veloc the initial velocity of the projectile here, and this is the final velocity of the projectile in the y direction. Uh, to reach the maximum height, we know the final velocity is of course zero, as at the maximum height, um, in the y direction, just before the projectile comes back down, its velocity is zero. Uh, this is uh, due to gravity, as gravity is always acting towards Earth, uh, and slowing any projectile that is initially uh, thrust upwards uh, away from Earth. Now, the time to reach the maximum height is obviously one part uh, is obviously the first part of the projectile's uh, flight, uh, with the second part being its return to Earth. So when we're calculating the total time of flight for a projectile, uh, we have to double uh, the time to reach the maximum height. Now this gets us the total time of flight. Uh, the second equation on this page relates to horizontal range, uh, which is actually based on the initial horizontal velocity. Um, of the projectile and its time of flight. Now you notice if we use this equation, the acceleration in the horizontal direction with this term is actually zero, as there is no external forces acting in the horizontal direction. Um, the only forces acting on the uh, projectile are gravity, and that is independent of the horizontal motion, which is uh, horizontal motion is in the x plane, with gravity being in the y plane. We can use these equations and do an example. So this first example, uh, we're calculating the velocity after one and a half seconds for, of a ball that is initially thrown at two meters a second towards Earth. Um, so we can substitute these values. Now you notice in this equation, I've got a negative two and a negative 9.8. Now, as a convention, I have stated that up is positive. So anything going down, is any vector going down, is in the negative direction. So if, for example, this negative 2 is 2 meters a second towards the ground. And the negative 9.8 is the um, value of gravity that goes towards the ground. So our final answer of velocity is negative 16.7. Um, and this negative actually represents that it is going towards the ground. So we're just focusing on the y direction.
As mentioned before, we can work out the range of a projectile once we know its time um, with this equation, which is a simplified version of the equation mentioned earlier with acceleration removed. These equations here relate to the velocity of a projectile at any time in either the x or the y plane. Um, as they're independent of each other, uh, they can form two sides of a triangle with a resultant component uh, being the actual velocity. If we find the x and y components of the velocity, we can actually sum these together uh, in vector form uh, to find the resultant velocity of a projectile. In this example, we're going to be finding the different values of a projectile that's launched at 45 degrees from the horizontal. Now, from the horizontal means when you've got the ground, uh, you measure up from the horizontal to find the angle that we're looking for. In this case, it's 45 degrees. So you can see the values of the components in the x and y direction are the same, with values of 7.071 meters per second. Now, if you, if you draw that in a triangle, you'll notice that it's an isosceles triangle with two of the sides the same. So to find out the time of flight of this projectile, uh, we focus solely on the Y component. So that's the component that goes up and down, uh, which gives us the time of flight. So if following, uh, using this equation here, um, we substitute our values. Now, the final velocity in the Y direction, we can look at the first half of the time of flight, and the final velocity is when it gets to the top of the flight. Now, in the Y direction, this will be zero. So if you throw a ball up in the air, and you catch it, uh, when it reaches the top, the velocity in the y direction is zero before it comes back down as gravity is always acting down. So that value here is zero, so this simplifies our equation. And if we substitute the other values, um, keeping in mind the convention that up is positive, uh, we find that the time of flight for the first half of the, fl of the projectile's flight is 0.72 seconds. Now we've got to remember this is only the first half, so if we double it, we get the total time of flight for the projectile, which is 1.4. Now um, we can find out the horizontal range of the projectile. So in this case, we focus solely on the values that are in the horizontal plane. So we know the time of flight of the projectile, and we know the uh, horizontal initial velocity. So we simply substitute the values, and we get um, the range of 10.18 meters per second. Now if you'd like to pause the video and have a look at the previous slide or have a look at the slides in your notes and attempt to do uh, these four questions. So as with our previous example where our projectile was launched at 10 meters per second, um, have a go at calculating it when instead of launched at 45 degrees, it is launched at 10, 80, 25, and 65 degrees, and have a look at the values and see what pattern you can find. So pause the video and try those if you, if you want. Now you might have found uh, by doing those previous calculations that um, you get uh, uh, results uh, as indicated by this graph. Now we can have a look at, for example, 10 degrees. Um, when the projectile is launched um, at 10 degrees, we get a range of approximately 30, me uh, 30 meters. Um, we also get a range of 30 meters, though, if the projectile is launched at 80 degrees to the horizontal with the same initial velocity. Now, we can see this; uh, these two launch angles correspond to each other and provide us, uh, the same range. Uh, the same occurs for 20 and 70 degrees. Um, and so on. And you can see that when the, when the two angles add up to 90 degrees, they get the same uh, range. Now you can also see the blue line, which is the 45 degree, which is a launch angle of 45 degree. And you can see the blue line has the greatest range. So what I've got shown here is uh, an excerpt from the textbook, page 18. Um, and it's an interesting proof of why 45 degrees is the optimum angle of launch for a projectile. Uh, this is interesting um, as it proves it mathematically, but it also can be applied when you play sport or uh, in daily life to get the maximum range.
So all we do uh, when we're doing this proof is using algebraic values that could be anything, um, that could be any value of a projectile uh, and find the optimum angle from those values which would apply to any scenario. So first we work out the time of flight, which is in this section here. Now substituting the values of the components of the um, initial velocity, um, we get the time of flight uh, given to be 2 times the initial velocity um, sine theta over the gravity. Uh, we substitute, since we know the value of time, then we can substitute this for the range calculation. And we, and we find that our range is the initial velocity squared times sine 2 theta over gravity. Now, now we want to find the maximum range from this. So how do we maximize u squared sine 2 theta over gravity? So as the values of u squared and g will be constant, so we have to find out when sine 2 theta is at its maximum value. So if we remember back to mathematics that uh, when we've got a unit circle, sine relates to the y component. So we have to, f we have to find out when that sine value is at its uh, maximum value, which on a unit circle be 1. Angles of, uh, in a unit circle are measured from the positive x-axis with a pivot around the origin. So the maximum value of y will be uh, at the point 0, 1, which would be 90 degrees on the unit circle, so pointing straight up. So the maximum value here, that's how we find that 90 degrees. Now when we've got 2 theta, um, we just halve it and we get that optimum angle of 45 degrees. Uh, the real trick in this problem was once we get to this step, um, uh, two si we've got 2 sine theta cos theta, so that is the equivalent of sine 2 theta as a mathematical rule. In the next video we'll be covering uh, air resistance.